All right, technology leaders, if you're currently developing and deploying your Gen AI products, but you're starting to see that there's a, lo a lot of hallucination happening where you're maybe not getting the, the most accurate information with the LLM uh, models that you're deploying, uh, I'd like to share with you one of the new features that DeepSet just launched. And I have Dean, our solutions engineer here, to, to help us go over this and really share with everyone what this crowding the score is in the observability dashboard uh, with DeepSet Cloud. So, uh, hey, Dean, how's it going? It's going fantastic. Thank you, Luis. Yeah. So, so what do we have uh, here? Um, what What is this groundedness observability? Yep. So you're looking at our observability um, UI, right? The whole idea is we're trying to track faithfulness or groundedness of responses that you're seeing from your LLM, right? So the complete opposite of you know a, a hallucination, right? And the whole idea is that we track that over time. And so you're essentially looking at a graph, right? That's being tracked over the last thirty days. And of course, we can zoom in or zoom out as it relates to that time period. But what we try to do is give you a score based on the responses that you're seeing from your LLMs, and then tying that back to the underlying documents that are being referenced within your RAG or within your retrieval augmented generation pipeline. And so that's what you're taking a look at. We can perhaps take an example here where I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to our search. Um, functionality here, right? And so I can perhaps on the same pipeline ask this question of what should I do in Berlin? And in this use case, we've taken the 35,000 uh, top Wikipedia articles, right, for this use case. But flipping back over to the observability dashboard and perhaps giving this a refresh and going down to that pipeline, we'll note that that score has gone down. You oh, know, yeah. Yeah, it was in the like 0.8 or something like that, or that's right. Point seven. Okay, that's so right. What, what does that mean exactly? Why did it go down? Because that answer that was generated, right? What we can take a look at is basically this answer that was generated doesn't really tie back to the underlying references or the underlying documents that we pulled in, and that's what we see here with the sources. And I can give you maybe a, perhaps a different example here where we type in what is AI, right? We can actually see coming back to the observability uh, dashboard and clicking to the right pipeline. We can see that that score goes back up from a, um, it should go back up from a 0.70 to a 0.72, right? And quickly just taking a look at the result here, right? The whole idea is within DeepSet, you know, you get an answer, but you can also reference the underlying documents. And so in this case, what this means is that the answer from our LLM, which in this case is GPT 3.5 Turbo, uh, you know, matches really well with the underlying references that are being pulled in um, from our pipeline. I see. Okay. So then you can click on one of those references and then it pulls it up on the site here. Uh, you can read through that if you want to read through the entire document. Um, that's great. And, and so is it just these few documents that that we're pulling information from or are there other documents like how how does it decide what documents to pull information from uh good question so in terms of the documents or the number of documents that we're pulling in and flipping over back to that observability dashboard we can scroll down and take a look at the what we call the top k right so what are the documents that are being referenced and being you know sent off to the prompt and again, the whole idea here is in this case, there is 10 documents and we can see that retrieval is actually working quite well, right? Because it tends to be the first document that is often referenced. But Luis, maybe taking a look at the full pipeline here, right? Each pipeline, again, you know, we're essentially indexing data and then we have a query pipeline. And in our case, for the one that you just saw, maybe starting from the top. So we'll ask a question, what is AI? Right. We have what we call a hybrid retrieval approach where we're using keyword based retriever and a um, embedding retriever. And within that, what we're doing is taking the, you know, for example, from the embedding retriever, we're taking the query, we're embedding it and we're comparing it to the most relevant documents within our, our document store. Right. So in our case, right from the embedding retriever, we're pulling in 10 documents. Mm -hmm. The keyword-based retriever, we're pulling in another 10 documents. We're joining the results. We're ranking the results. 
right? And within the ranking, our batch size is a number is a total of 20 documents that we're reducing to the top 10. Oh, wow. We're kicking that off to a prompt node or to a large language model, which I mentioned in this case is GPT 3.5 Turbo. And then in our case, we're also adding the references, which is the last step that you see here. Got it. Okay. So that's what the those top 10 documents that you were showing earlier in the dashboard. Um, that's what uh, the re-ranker does. It essentially takes the top, the overall 20 documents and it gets a top 10 from there. And it um, it picks you know, those documents to choose from to answer your query. Exactly. And the whole idea of, of the re-ranker here is to optimize right the the ranking process and that, you know oftentimes it's the case for example that we see you know the document that's being referenced the most is of rank four right so in our case you can rank documents you can combine different rankers and then the whole idea within that is making sure that you know we are most of the times referencing the you know the top documents within the top k that we're that we're pulling in oh this is great and then over time um uh from what i was seeing on the the graph Right. So the the goal would be to have a much higher grounded score, maybe closer to the one, because I see here that it goes from zero to one. Um, but as we saw the few queries that we just gave it uh, today, we saw the the graph go down. But if we ask in more and more queries or we're adding more and more queries, it should bring that grounded score up. Is that is that accurate? That's right. And I think if, if you think about this and using this at scale, right, the whole idea is, and it's often the case where you perhaps start with a fair or poor score, right? But if we work with prompt engineering, right, or the prompt explorer, if we think about, you know, the way that we're doing retrieval, right, if we think about limiting the top K or perhaps controlling the top case so that we can pull in the right documents, what we tend to see is iterative improvements to pull this score back up to something that we feel comfortable with. Awesome.